hey welcome to this video of not real engineering and in this video i will be talking about crystal plasticity so we will see the basic concepts of crystal plasticity when to use it and when not to use it and what are the different things we have to consider while studying crystal plasticity now let's start with what name suggests so crystal plasticity the first word is crystal so what is crystal so for any solid material if you zoom into it if you really zoom into it then you will find either of two atom structures so first will be structured atoms as shown over here so in this you can see not necessarily all atoms has to be of same element it can be compound but they are in a orderly fashion or otherwise you will see randomly dispersed atom as shown over here now this structured atoms are mostly found in metals and these random the dispersed atoms you will mostly find in glass ceramics or polymers so this is crystal and when you cool a liquid metal in liquid of course atoms are in randomly dispersed position when you cool a liquid metal they arrange themselves in this orderly fashion because the energy of this structure is minimum so it is stable then plasticity so a plastic deformation is ability of solid material to undergo permanent deformation as shown over here so this is a general stress strain curve so as you know when you apply a load on any material initially it will be in a elastic phase so if you remove the load all of the deformation will be recovered but beyond a certain point if you remove the applied load there will be some part of deformation which is recovered but there will be some permanent deformation so this is known as plastic deformation so what name suggests it in crystal plasticity we will study how this crystal undergo permanent deformation now let's see what happens at microscopic level when we apply a load on any metal or a crystal so in metals a plastic deformation can occur only due to shear so this is experimentally observed as well so in metal as you can see these are atoms and if you apply a shear then only it will undergo permanent deformation all other loads like tension or compression loading it will cause only elastic deformation so it is very important to understand why many people know this but they don't actually understand why this is happening so for that let's assume this is the initial configuration of metal or a crystal and these are the individual atoms which are which are in orderly structure now this as i said atoms arrange themselves in this orderly fashion because this is the minimum energy configuration so this is stable now if you apply a tensile load then atoms will displace like this so some atoms will get displaced to right some to the left and there will be a gap in between now this is exaggeration okay so gap will not be this much and also gap will not concentrate only between these two atoms there will be some gap over here some gap over here but you get the idea right so there will be some gap in atoms now this is not a stable position this is unstable therefore when you remove the load atoms will come back to its original position similarly in tension uh, sorry similarly in compression so when we apply a compression some atoms will get squeezed into each other but again this is not a stable position so when you remove the load again atom will go into its initial position but when you apply a shear loading then atoms will slide over each other and they will still remain in the same structure same configuration so if you consider a small portion from here and if you consider a small portion from here you will find this is exactly same structure but if you take a small portion from here you will see this is not the exactly same structure as the uh, initial configuration so this one is stable and this is just a representation right actually there are atoms everywhere so this whole thing is like a atoms so in this position atoms can remain forever therefore it's a permanent deformation so that's why only under shear a metal can undergo permanent deformation this permanent deformation or a sliding of atoms 
is not possible on all planes or on all directions so there are some specific planes along which atoms can slide on each other and those planes are called as slip planes and in a particular slip plane again there are only some direction along which atoms can slide over each other so those directions are called slip directions so i'm just going to show you one example so this is a 2d representation but actually imagine it as a 3d so let's say this is again a initial configuration and now imagine two different planes this is a vertical one plane which is slip plane a and there is one more plane which is slip plane b so when atoms slide across slip plane a let's say this plane so when atoms slide across slip plane a you will get this configuration now if you see let's say this atom if you track this atom this atom came over here from this position and similarly if you see the sliding across slip plane b then you will get this configuration so if you track this atom over here it came from here a slipping in direction of slip plane b feels much easier than slipping in direction of slip plane a although there are some specific slip planes or specific slip directions the easiness with which atoms can slide across them is different slip system is called and slip system is nothing but a combination of slip plane and slip direction another question can be how to find out these slip plane slip directions and slip systems right so usually a slip plane will be the most densely packed plane in a crystal and similarly a slip direction will be the direction on a slip plane along denser atoms and slip system is just a combination of slip planes and slip direction now there are many other factors which affect the slip planes or slip directions means overall slip systems first is crystal structure you know the different basic crystal structures like fcc bcc hcp so depending on that the planes on which atoms are most densely packed will change and then depending on that the slip systems will change again it depends on material if either it's a single element or compound it also depends on atom sizes so for example if there are two compounds in one compound the sizes of atoms of two elements are very different then it will have different slip systems than a compound in which atom sizes are similar and similarly it depends on type of bonds as well like ionic bond or covalent bond now just to give you one example let's consider a fcc metal and let's see how slip occurs in that fcc metal so in fcc metal there are four planes on which sliding of atom occurs easily therefore the number of slip planes for fcc is four this is just one example of plane out of those four planes so this is one plane out of those four and then on each plane there are three directions on which atom can slide easily which means no, number of slip direction it's three for each plane and these are those three directions over here shown then the total number of slip systems will be 4 into 3 which is equal to 12 so always remember the number of slip systems will be multiplication of number of slip planes and number of slip directions now this is most important part of crystal plasticity so as i said a plastic deformation in metal can occur only due to shear but it does not mean that a tensile force cannot cause plastic deformation in many cases what can happen is a tensile load in one direction can cause shear in some another direction so let's take a example so this is a cylindrical metal bar and we are loading that bar in this p direction so we are applying a stress of sigma in this p direction now imagine there is a plane and the normal to this plane n makes an angle phi to this direction of loading p so that means if you take if you decompose this loading p into the perpendicular direction and parallel direction to this plane then you can see this loading p actually causes a shear load 
of sigma cos phi on this plane because it is at angle phi and then let's imagine there is some specific direction in this plane which is s which makes angle again lambda to the p then the shear on this plane and on this direction will be sigma cos phi cos lambda and this is nothing but a resolved shear so as we discussed let's say this is fcc crystal there will be 12 slip system so on each slip system this loading will cause some shear and that shear value of that shear we can calculate by sigma cos phi cos lambda here this cos phi cos lambda is known as schmidt factor and when the value of this resolved shear on specific slip system reaches a certain value known as critical resolved shear atoms start to slip and plastic deformation begins in that slip system so if there are 12 slip systems in fcc then we will calculate the schmidt factor for all of those 12 systems and the slip system with maximum schmidt factor will have the maximum resolved shear therefore that will be the slip system to start the plastic deformation so 12 systems will not start plastic deformation simultaneously only the only the slip system which has most resolved shear will start the slipping now whatever we discussed till now it's true only for single crystal so single crystal means a structure like this but in reality this is not true in reality all the metals or whatever crystal you see will have some small grains inside it and why that happens is let's say there is a liquid metal and we are cooling that liquid metal then a crystallization process will start at different locations independently and these crystals will grow and when they reach each other you will see a grain boundary so now this crystal and this crystal are same the structure is same the only difference is they are oriented at different angles so as you can see over here this crystal and this crystal it is same structure but their orientation is different and because of that a boundary is generated between them which is known as grain boundary and all these small crystals are known as grains now the size of this grain will depend on many things such as a cooling rate then the number of impurities present then a then the material itself which means the atom sides and then a crystal structure etc when to use this crystal plasticity so for most of the simulations what we do at micro scale micro scale means lens scale is either millimeter or above we don't need crystal plasticity and the reason behind that is imagine you have a aluminum slab like this which is a you know, the dimension of which slab is in meters then if you take a very small portion of this aluminum slab you will find grains something like this this will be the crystal structure and you can see the size of grains is very very tiny so if you want to consider all the grains in th this big slab first of all the simulation will be computationally much much expensive and another thing the grains will be randomly oriented if you consider a big slab like whose lens scale is in meters then because of this random distribution the overall response of that slab will not depend on those crystals will not depend on the crystal orientations or even grain boundaries so for macro scale simulations most of the time we never need crystal plasticity only in few specific cases for example if the grains are in preferred or orderly oriented fashion so as you can see over here the grains are kind of elongated in one direction so that means the response of grains response of this slab will be different if we load it in this direction than this direction so sometimes in this case we will need crystal plasticity or for a single crystal but again this is very rare to find at this lens scale but nowadays single crystals of pure metals can be manufactured in millimeter scale so over there we will need a crystal plasticity 
बट मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम क्रिस्टल प्लास्टिसिटी यूज इज फॉर मेजो और माइक्रो स्केल सिम्युलेशन विच विल बी इन द ऑर्डर्स ऑफ माइक्रोमीटर्स और इवन लेस दैन माइक्रोमीटर्स बट इट्स नॉट एज इजी एज इट लुक्स सो वॉट वी सॉ टिल नाउ इज इन मेटल प्लास्टिक डिफॉर्मेशन कैन ऑकर ओनली ड्यू टू शेयर एंड दिस प्लास्टिक डिफॉर्मेशन ऑकर्स ड्यू टू स्लाइडिंग ऑफ एटम्स ऑन सम स्पेसिफिक स्लिप सिस्टम्स एंड इट स्टार्ट्स वेन अ रिजॉल्ड शेयर ऑन दैट स्पेसिफिक स्लिप सिस्टम रीचेस अ क्रिटिकल रिजॉल्ड शेयर वैल्यू नाउ इन रियालिटी दिस क्रिटिकल रिजॉल्ड शेयर इनक्रीजेस एज प्लास्टिक डिफॉर्मेशन इनक्रीजेस सो दिस इज जस्ट एग्जाम्पल सो दिस इज अ क्रिटिकल रिजॉल्ड शेयर एंड दिस इज डिफॉर्मेशन so you can see as deformation increases the value of critical resolved shear also increases that means the resistance for deformation increases this is known as hardening and you can see this is not even a linear graph so it is non linear then the active slip planes changes with respect to plastic deformation what that means is let's say out of 12 slip systems slip started to happen on one plane or one slip system then let's say slip is happening on this plane then there will be some point where the critical resolved shear for this plane will be so high that there will be some another plane whose critical resolved shear is lesser than this then slip will start to happen on that plane then again its critical resolved shear will increase then again it might switch back to its original plane and this is just a example with two planes in reality there are 12 or even sometimes more slip systems so slip systems will keep changing in between each other then a special attention has to be paid for grain boundaries for single crystal i would say it is much easier but when grain boundaries come into picture it is even difficult and most importantly in reality crystals will always have defects and imperfections one example is shown over here then again depending on defects and imperfection the response of crystal will change so these are the basics of crystal plasticity so in this video we did not see anything about mathematical modeling or any equations so in future videos we will see how to mathematically model crystal plasticity and mainly there are two types of mathematical models one is phenomenological model and one is physics based models so physics based models are much more complicated than phenomenological models but we will see both of them and then we talked about slip but there is something called twin as well so we will see what is twinning and how it differs from slip then we will also see tutorials on some crystal plasticity simulation softwares which are which are available out there one of them is abacus along with its subroutine cpfm there is one open source software called damask and there is one more software called naper which is to generate microstructures so these softwares are not that widely used therefore there are not many tutorials available out there so we will talk about them as well so let me know if you like this video and if you have any questions please please comment in the comment sections below thank you for watching i will see you in the next one